Hi, I'm Charles Bruce. I'm a consultant at Mayo Clinic uh, and I work in the Marfan Clinic. A uh, particular interest in uh, patients with uh, diseases of the aorta as well as valvular heart disease and I've also been interested in echocardiography. Marfan syndrome is, a, uh, is an inherited condition uh, that affects the connective tissue, the tissues that bind uh, things together in your body. Uh, and its manifestations mainly uh, are outward in tall, lanky uh, people. In fact, Abraham Lincoln was thought to have Marfan syndrome. Never really confirmed, though, because they didn't have genetic testing in those days. Um, basketball players tend to have that kind of body habitus that we associate with patients with Marfan syndrome, although many of them don't have this condition. A few have had and have suffered the, the consequences uh, of that condition, particularly since it was unrecognized in them. So generally, from a layperson's perspective, it's that tall, lanky individual, much taller than their peers, taller than their siblings, sometimes taller than their parents, that alerts the patient uh, or their family members that something's not quite right. Uh, the actual defect has been identified uh, in most cases to be a, a result of a gene abnormality uh, that codes for fibrillin. Um, and although the test is available, uh, it, it doesn't need to be positive to confirm the diagnosis. Uh, that's the big challenge about Marfan syndrome right now, is that it really is still a clinical diagnosis. And we have a number of clinical criteria, uh, and by that I mean various uh, abnormalities that we look for that need to be fulfilled, sort of like a checklist. And then if you match a certain number of, uh, of these findings, we can then say that you have a clinical diagnosis of Marfan syndrome. And the, the reason why, as physicians, we're so interested in making this diagnosis is because it can have some important consequences on patients who have the disease. And these, dis these problems may not be manifest outwardly. They are occurring silently and particularly affecting the aorta or the main blood vessel that comes from the, the heart. So uh, let me show you on this heart uh, where the aorta is. The aorta is this large blood vessel here in red that comes off the main pumping chamber of the heart called the left ventricle. And basically blood comes from the lungs, is oxygenated there, comes into the left atrium, then into the left ventricle. The left ventricle then pumps the oxygenated blood up through this big blood vessel called the aorta. And this blood vessel then sends blood to the head and the neck and then down to the rest of the body. So you can see it's a very important blood vessel. And in patients with Marfan syndrome, this part of the aorta, called the aortic root, or the ascending aorta, starts to swell over time. And when the aorta reaches a size of about five centimeters, its risk of tearing or rupturing uh, is high, and therefore we recommend prophylactic or preventative surgery to prevent that complication from happening because that unfortunately is a devastating complication and can go unnoticed for years if the appropriate screening tests are not performed. And these screening tests can be as simple as an echocardiogram. That is a non-invasive test, sort of an ultrasound test where we're able to scan an ultrasound beam through the chest wall and have a look at the heart and particularly the aorta and make accurate measurements of the aorta and determine whether or not it's swollen or not in patients who we think may, may or, or in fact do have Marfan syndrome. So it is, this, it, it is this abnormality and our ability to identify the, the abnormality early on that has allowed us to um, allow patients to live normal uh, life expectancies and not to have the sudden unexpected complication of aortic dissection uh, or rupture. And that's really the prime reason why it's so important to identify these patients if you think you have Marfan syndrome to present to a physician uh, so that they can have a look at you, do the appropriate testing and see whether or not you fulfill those criteria and then offer an ultrasound exam uh, of your heart and aorta to see whether or not your aorta is involved. So apart from, so, so to make this clinical diagnosis, some of the other features that we look for as physicians to uh, fulfill the diagnosis of Marfan syndrome um, are abnormalities of the eyes. Generally, uh, some patients with Marfan syndrome may as young children have at, 
lens dislocation. So that is a, a very important aspect that we use to fulfill the, the, the diagnosis. Uh, other abnormalities include the skeletal manifestations, either having a sunken chest or what we call a pectus deformity. Uh, it may in fact be a pigeon chest where the, the chest deformity is actually outward. We may see a scoliosis where the spine has an S-shaped bend, sometimes manifest in children. Um, other abnormalities include joint hypermobility, where you're able to take your thumb and put it onto your uh, forearm very easily. Uh, joints just much more flexible than, 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 than normal. Other features that we look for um, are uh, stretch marks uh, that, are, are, that occur outside the setting of uh, recent weight loss or sudden weight gain or outside the uh, pregnancy. Uh, so, so people who have stretch marks, that would be a, a, a clue. Other abnormalities that we can look for are uh, abnormality with the lungs, uh, where we, what we call a spontaneous pneumothorax uh, that, that, that may have occurred in the patient's history. Uh, and also with a CT scan, we're able to look at the spine uh, and look for something we call a dural ectasia, which is basically just an abnormal swelling of the sac around the spinal cord near the tailbone. So these are some of the, the features that we look for um, that help us check off whether or not a patient may have Marfan syndrome. Other important uh, aspects to the diagnosis include a family history. Uh, if there's a family history of sudden death, if there's a family history of uh, aneurysms, particularly of the ascending aorta, uh, and certainly if there's a family history of a first degree relative with Marfan syndrome, that would be very important since this is a, a, a genetic condition and that would help us uh, fulfill that diagnosis. And then as I mentioned earlier, uh, another aspect to the diagnosis is actually doing blood testing and confirming that there's an abnormal gene mutation uh, for, for fibrillin. So uh, we use this constellation of, of, of findings uh, to make the diagnosis uh, of Marfan syndrome. I'm also glad to say that once we have made the diagnosis, that we can then offer specific treatments. And these treatments can be counseling, uh, explanation about what you, what, what you can do and what you can't do from the point of view of exercise and sports, because generally we would advise against any contact sports or any sports that result in straining or turning red in the face. Um, genetic counseling, uh, particularly pregnancy counseling because of the, the, the prospects of having an affected individual having children with Marfan syndrome and the consequences that may have. Uh, and then there are certain medicines that we can prescribe to avoid the, uh, the, the and perhaps even potentially delay the swelling of the aorta. Uh, and these groups of or classes of medications include beta blockers and then also angiotensin receptor blockers. And there's a lot of research currently ongoing looking at uh, how effective these medications may be in delaying uh, or even preventing the onset of, of, of uh, aortic aneurysms. The next uh, aspect of treatment, as I mentioned and alluded to earlier, was the prospect of preventative surgery. A and here at an institution like ours, uh, we have very experienced surgeons who, when the, the the, the timing is right and the aorta is of a sufficient caliber that would warrant preventative surgery. Uh, we can then offer patients either what's called a valve sparing procedure, where if the aortic valve is, uh, is, looks completely normal and only leaks in, in a trivial amount, we can consider saving that aortic valve and only replacing uh, the aorta. Uh, conversely, the more standard procedure and the one that is been generally done up until recently is what's called the Bentol procedure, where the aortic valve and the ascending aorta is, uh, is replaced entirely. Uh, and currently Mayo Clinic is involved in a multi-center trial looking at whether the valve sparing procedure uh, is as effective and as enduring as the standard Bentol procedure where the aortic valve and the ascending aorta is replaced uh, all at the same time. Let me give you some specific advice as to what, what to do if you think you have Marfan syndrome or you've looked on the web and you think that you may have Marfan syndrome but don't know really what to do or if you have a friend or a family member that you, you suspect has the condition and they haven't sought medical attention. My advice to you would be to seek uh, advice from a physician 
uh, particularly a physician who may have had some experience with Marfan syndrome, but certainly even go to your family practice physician and say, look, I think I may have Marfan syndrome, I'm tall and lanky, what do you think? They can do some certain measurements, examine you, um, and, and if they don't feel completely comfortable, and it can be a challenging diagnosis to make, then uh, maybe suggest, or they may suggest referral to a center like ours, a tertiary center, uh, that really has expertise in the diagnosis of Marfan syndrome and related conditions, because it may be that you don't have Marfan syndrome, but you may have one of another kind of conditions that can masquerade as Marfan syndrome, uh, and sometimes these diagnoses really can be difficult to make and come to a center like ours uh, where uh, you can be seen by a team of specialists with a lot of experience in the condition um, uh, and, and, and have the question put, put to rest. It's important for you, it's important for your family members, it's important to your friends because it's an easy uh, condition to miss, to ignore uh, and, and certainly what you don't want to do is have the swelling of the aorta missed uh, and and, and uh, forego the opportunity of having essentially life-saving preventative surgery permitting uh, someone affected with Marfan syndrome to live a normal life. Another very useful resource that I'd like to point you towards is uh, the National Marfan Foundation. This is a volunteer organization quite unique because it's run and organized by patients and their relatives with Marfan syndrome. And it has a huge amount of very useful information, not only from the diagnostic standpoint, which centers are looking uh, at patients with Marfan syndrome, but also really neat day-to-day -day tips on how to live with the condition. What I recommend is have a look at the bottom of the screen. The website is www.marfan.org. It's a fantastic resource, huge amount of practical information with tips on, uh, on how to live with the condition if you have it, or if you think you may have it, some pointers in, in, in how, how to, to best get the diagnosis made and, and the right treatment.